Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Today, we're gonna be going over this. So this is a pretty widely requested effect, the popular Wolverine Claws. And so I decided I might go ahead and try and do my own take on it. So what's gonna be covered in this tutorial is the faking of the 3D geometry tracking, the compositing of the digital claws, and then the skin displacement for when the claws, you know, go in and out of the hand disgustingly as they do so. There is going to be a link down in the description below where you can download the 3D model of the Wolverine claws, as well as a rough model of a fist. You'll see what that's for. And my footage will be included in there as well. So if you just wanna practice the effect and follow along with the footage I got, you're welcome to do so. However, if you're going to be shooting your own, I recommend that you do steady motion with your hand. This technique is not really meant for big, sweeping, complex movements. I mainly designed it around the initial beauty shot of the claws extending out or retracting back into the hand. But with that being said, let's get right into it. <clears throat> anyway. So here we are in Adobe After Effects. As you can see, I have my footage imported already. So I'm going to, as usual, click and drag that down to this symbol for a new composition. I'm gonna move forward in time to about the point when I want it to start right there. I'm gonna hit Alt, open bracket, and then Alt, home, and then go to the end, right about there looks good. Alt, close bracket, and then N on the keyboard to trim the composition, right click, trim comp to work area. Now this is the portion of the footage that we're going to be working with. And simply enough, uh, our next step is just going to be to track it. With our footage selected, go up here to animation and then find track in Mocha AE. It'll probably ask you to register yours, but you haven't yet. So ignore that for the hundredth time and click okay. Now next I'm going to scrub forward to the point in time when the track should start right about there after my hand finishes shaking looks good. Then I'm going to grab this tool up here, the X spline and draw a shape just kind of around the middle of my hand. There's no exact science to this, just kind of roughly get the outline. And then we're going to click this button here to track forward to the next frame. Make sure we got it. It's looking good. You can do that a few times until you're feeling comfortable to hit the play. Keep an eye on it. Make sure it's not going to have any big errors. Otherwise we're going to have to go back, but Mocha usually does a fairly good job on its first try. There we go, the ending I'm not gonna worry too much about. Down here, find export tracking data, and then make sure it's set to After Effects transform data. Now there's a few other options here, but just this bottom one's the one we're gonna use. Click copy to clipboard, and now we can go back here to Adobe After Effects, go to the very first frame, and we're going to create a new null object, and then choose edit, paste. Now the next thing I wanna do is select this null and then hit S on the keyboard to bring up the scale properties. And then I'm going to uncheck the stopwatch to get rid of those as we don't want our claws to be randomly getting bigger and smaller. We're just mostly concerned with the rotation and position value of this null. Now the next step is to create a new solid. I'm gonna call this element 3D as usual and click okay. We're gonna add element 3D onto it. Now here in the scene setup, I'm going to click the import button in the top left and then find my claw OBJ. Click okay. So right now I'm not actually going to worry about the environment or the texture or anything like that. We're just going to get this about set up so we can focus on our track. So the way to do that is uh, select our claw here and then hit control D on the keyboard to duplicate it uh, move it over to the right duplicate it again, move it to the left. I'm just kind of approximating uh, just for the sake of the tutorial. However, uh, you'll need to uh, probably go back and fine tune to your actor's hand specifically. You don't want claws coming out of the middle of the fingers. I'm kind of going for the, the movie where it comes between the knuckles. And as you notice I'm doing here, there's a little bit of rotation in Wolverine's claws that I'm uh, adding in. So that way they kind of spread out as they get to the tips. So once you have it to a point that you're happy with, select all of the claws, uh, holding shift on the keyboard, and move them all so that way the base is in the center here. So that way the anchor point for the group folder is about where they would connect with the hand. So far so good, go ahead and click OK. Now back here in After Effects, we can go to Element 3D, uh, toggle open Group 1 here, 
Under the particle replicator, we can change the rotation of our claws so that way they would be oriented the correct direction that they uh, would need to be to come out of my hand. So uh, 90 in the X and uh, 180 in the Z, and uh, we're golden. Now we can go down here to the group utilities and under create group null, click create. Uh, just for sake of organization, I'm going to rename this to claws. Don't forget to save. Always saving your project. It's very important. Now we can scrub forward to the point in time when they would just be finished coming out of the hand. So right about here looks good. Now let's move them over to where they would intersect with the hand and then parent claws to our track null. So initially you'll be tempted to move them forward in Z space so that way they appear to be the right size. But if you do it like that, uh, they'll actually be off from our original track point and appear to be floating in front of the hand rather than actually attached to it. So instead of moving them forward, just control Z to undo that, we're going to hit S on the keyboard to scale them up just until each of these would line up with the gaps in my knuckles. Now the next step here is easily the most tedious part of this whole effect and it's why I suggested keeping your hand movement steady and not going with great sweeping motions as we're actually going to have to go through and manually correct this track. The first step is we actually want our Y rotation to be mimicking the Y rotation of our uh, null here. So we're going to click claws and then hit R on the keyboard and then uh, click our null and hit R as well to bring up the rotation. And then we're going to alt click on the Y rotation of our null here and pick whip it to the rotation of the track. Now it's gonna throw it off a little bit. However, if you scrub through, you can already see that it's made an improvement to how well it's following the hand. Next, I wanna scrub through to the point when my hand just begins to tilt up. So right here, this frame, and I'm going to create a keyframe for the orientation. And if you hit Shift P, you can also bring up the position and uh, create a keyframe for that as well. And on this frame, I'm going to reorient and fix where the claws are at. That looks pretty good to me. Now I'm gonna scrub forward until my hand just stops moving right about there. And again, I'm going to reorient and fix right about where these claws are. And now what you wanna do is select your first keyframes, right click, and then choose keyframe assistant, ease, ease out, and then select your second two keyframes, right click, and choose ease in. Now, if you play that back, you can already see that it's sticking to your hand fairly well and the parallax actually lining up realistically with how it would be in the scene. So the way to finish this up is to do the same thing throughout the rest of the animation. Uh, go to points just before the hand changes orientation in the scene, create a keyframe, move to when it's finishing the orientation change, create a new keyframe, and adjust where the position and orientation are to line up the claws. And I'm gonna do that right now. I'm gonna just kind of roughly go through this and uh, let you guys watch how I do it. Uh, creating keyframes right before I move. Go to the end of the movement right there. Uh, create another keyframe. Uh, readjust how the claws are oriented and where their position is at. And once you're happy with that, select the first keyframes, ease out, select the second keyframes, ease in. There we go, so far so good. Again, create a keyframe here, scrub forward, right here, I'm going to change the orientation and the position. That looks pretty good, again, ease out and ease in. I'm going to move this forward a bit. And like I said, this is kind of a tedious process and it's all up to your individual eye. Now this is another tip I would like to show you guys. Notice how on this orientation change here, my hand actually tilts a little bit slower than it begins to move. So you can offset these keyframes. So say the orientation won't actually start changing for a few frames, but the motion will. So we're gonna go ahead and create a keyframe here for the end of the animation. 
and uh, it doesn't take too long but as you can see it is a little bit of a process to do this manually however the result actually does work fairly well when accompanied with the uh, pick whip of the Y rotation as well as parenting to a track null. So now that we have the animation completed for the claws attaching to the hands, we need to add the, uh, the motion of them coming out and then going back in. So uh, the way to do that is let's go back here to right when the track starts. So right here I'm squeezing my hand and I'd say about this frame is the first frame I want to see the tips of the claws. So say the animation will last four frames, we'll go page down, one, two, three, four, create a keyframe, go backwards, four frames, one, two, three, four, and then we're going to adjust the position back to the left all the way, and then we're going to change the orientation so that way they're rotated correctly here. Let's see what that looks like looks pretty good. We can actually create some keyframes in between here to make small adjustments. So let's let's go back one and I think it needs to be up a touch and back again. Uh, that looks pretty good. Back one more time. Up just a hair. Rotate again. That looks pretty good. And then back and the claws are gone. Now with uh, our claws null selected here we can hit S on the keyboard and we're going to keyframe the scale for this animation as well. So uh, create a keyframe, uh, four frames forward, remember, one, two, three, four, with page down. Click scale, one, two, three, four, page up. And then we're going to click this button here to unlink the constrained proportions. And then we're going to be changing the value on the far right here to make them squish together like this. So uh, let's move it down together a little. Play that back, see how that looks. Maybe a little bit further apart here. I'm actually going to move it down a touch. A little bit more and that about looks good to me great so now the animation for the claws coming out is completed and we can go do the same thing but in reverse order for the very end so let's go to the first frame that we want them going back in i'd say right here we're going to create a keyframe for scale go forward four frames one two three four we're going to scale them down a touch now we can click claws and hit U on the keyboard to bring up all of the keyframed values. So at this point in time, I want them all the way back to the left. So let's move them this direction. Let's change their orientation to get them rotated back the way they should be. Move it down a touch. And same thing as before, we can create some keyframes in the middle to fix this up, but that looks good. Uh, let's move this back up a touch. I like it. All right, so now at this point in time, I'm going to click my element 3D layer, and at the very last frame that the claws would potentially be visible, I'm going to hit Alt close bracket to stop my element 3D layer from being visible, and then same thing, go to our very, very first keyframe, hit Alt open bracket, so that's when element 3D first becomes visible. So at this point in time, we should pretty much have all of our tracking and animation completed. It may be necessary to go back in and refine some of this later, but for the time being, it's looking pretty good. So now our next step is the second most tedious part of this, is rotoscoping out the hand. There's a few different ways to do this, however for this shot in particular, the contrast between my hand and the background is perfect for the rotoscope tool in After Effects. So what I'm going to do is click my footage here for the very first frame of the animation, and then hit Control D, and then Alt open bracket, I'm going to go to the end here and then hit alt close bracket. So now I just have a second layer of my footage uh, for the length of the duration the claws are visible. So now I'm going to uh, take this, double click. So now up here, the roto brush tool, we can click that. And let's go to the very first frame again. And let's highlight our hand. That looks awesome. So now you see these small faint arrows here. Now that's the duration that the roto brush is going to be visible. We actually need to extend that out for the entire rest of the animation. So all the way to the end. So now we can go frame by frame and adjust the roto brush. There's not going to be much needed. Like I said, this shot works great with it because of the contrast and the depth of field. So uh, just any small issues you see, go ahead and correct them. If you need to add back in a little bit, you can click and drag more just like that, and it will have automatically keyframed it. Or if you need to take some away, you can hold Alt, changes the brush into a minus, 
and then it will delete wherever it is you draw. And I'm just going to speed up this process so that way you can see me doing it, but it does take a little bit of time. You need to correct some errors. All right, and when you're finished using the Roto tool, please click this freeze button here. Otherwise, it's going to be trying to recalculate every single frame every time you adjust them. This is going to freeze and create a map for you that uh, is very fast to render. All right, now we can go back over here into the composition that we were working in. Uh, let's collapse this, it's uh, too much open. Now I'm gonna rename this to our Roto layer just to keep track of it. Maybe we can give it a different color here like purple. I'm gonna drop this above element 3D. Now if you see, it actually covers our claws quite nicely, but we're gonna have to go back and refine because A, it's a little bit sharp, so let's turn up the feather and let's shift our edge in just a hair. And B, right here, it's actually being covered up all the way when we wanna be able to see it coming out of the gaps in the knuckles. And that's where our funny little hand model comes in. I'll show you how we set that up. So for the time being, we can turn off our roto layer so that way we can actually just see our claws. Back here in the element 3D scene setup, we're going to click import again, and then find our hand model, click okay. I'm going to rotate this so that way it lines up with our claws. We need to scale it up a bunch. And just like it would be if this was our actual hand, we're going to position it so that way the claws are coming out of the knuckles. So the next thing we need to do is click this arrow here and click on the material, scroll down to the very bottom, and then change force opacity down to like 50%. So that way we can see through it just a bit and then click OK. Now here, we're gonna be able to see how it lines up with our hand. So uh, you get a good idea of where it needs to be rotated and where it needs to be adjusted to, but we're trying to get the knuckles on this fake hand to line up as close as possible with the ones on the real hand. So uh, I know where I wanna rotate it back here in the scene setup. I'm gonna move uh, these knuckles down just a touch. That looks pretty good. A little bit more. Again, this is just kind of a guess and check process. Do as best as you can. It will take a little while. There we go, that doesn't look too bad. We might need to go back and change that a little bit more later, but there it is for the time being. All right, so now back here in the scene setup, we're going to, with our hand selected, go to the presets and under physical, add matte shadow to the hand. Now we can click okay. Now the next thing I'm going to do is click, uh, we're gonna turn on the roto, and select it, and then we're gonna pre-compose it. So layer, pre-compose, move all attributes, and click OK. Now for this section of time here, while we would be essentially seeing the knuckles, so from about here to about here again, we need to have a mask on the rotocomp that says don't affect this area. So after you've drawn your mask, hit M on the keyboard to bring up its properties, and then set it to subtract. Now it's going to take a little bit of keyframing to get the mask to situate the way you want it to. So go ahead and click the stopwatch for mask path and we're gonna go frame by frame and adjust it all the way through until you have something that you think looks good. Now this is arguably one of the most important parts of the tutorial and this is gonna take probably the longest out of everything. It's not too tedious as compared to keyframing the animation but at this point in time you want to make the contacts with the hand look as realistic as possible. It's fortunate that it doesn't show for too long so there's not too many imperfections to be noticed but you're really gonna wanna spend a lot of quality time here making the connections look good. As far as the masking goes for this point in time, I think it looks pretty good on my end. However, uh, there are just a couple things I wanna clean up. For example, I wanna give uh, the mask about a feather of uh, two pixels. Also, right here on the pointer finger side, our fake hand matte shadow uh, goes a little too far forward, so it cuts off the claw. So we need to move that back here in the scene setup. So we'll just uh, grab our hand and inch it back on the X axis just a tiny bit. We can click OK. So now we can actually composite our claws. Now over here in the project panel, I also have imported this panorama of my living room. Ignore the mess over here. This is going to act as the environment map for Element 3D. And in my opinion, it's the most important step for making the composite look realistic because it'll match color tones and uh, hot spots for where the lights are coming from, especially when working with uh, reflective materials such as the metal for the claws. So first we're going to create a new composition, this button here, uh, 1920 by 1080 is perfect, so click OK. 
And uh, we're going to drag our panorama into this composition and then right click and then choose transform fit to comp. Now next, before going any further, I want to right click composition settings, rename this to environment and then find our footage and drag that into this composition as well. I'm going to scale it down and then hover the poster in my footage next to the poster on the wall. Notice how the wall color is very yellow and the poster brown compared to the actual footage that I shot on. So before using this as the environment, we want to try and match these colors as closely as possible. So I'm going to grab my panorama and I'm going to add a levels adjustment to it and uh, expand that a little bit. I'm going to turn on this button down here, the red channel only for the composition, and I'm going to try and match these tones. So for levels, let's go to red, adjust that a little bit darker Then the green channel for both. Let's see. It needs to be a little darker again. Now the blue channel. Now we can switch this back out to RGB and uh, it's looking a lot better, still a little ways to go. Maybe we can add back in some green and a little bit more red. This is about ready to be used as our environment. So delete your footage out of that comp, it was just for reference. Now back over here into our main composition we were working in, go to the project panel and then find our environment composition that we just created and drag it down below everything. We can shut it off. And then inside of the Element 3D effect, we can find custom layers, custom texture maps, and then choose for layer one, our environment. Now inside of the scene setup, let's go to the environment map and then change it from the basic 2K to our layer one environment map. Click OK. Now under the presets, under Pro Shaders 2, which I'm using, there is a metal material that I thought looked really good for this, which was the second iteration of Clean Metal Clean labeled down here. So I'm going to drag that onto each of the claws. Now we can click OK. And already it's starting to look really good. So down here in the render settings, I'm going to go to physical environment and then let's turn on show in background. So already this lines up pretty much perfectly for me and how my scene had it set up. However, if you're using the same technique on your footage, you'll need to open up the rotate environment and then change how the environment is lining up with how you actually shot your scene. In my case, I'm just going to push it a little bit to the left and then turn off show and background. And that looks about good for me. So now the last thing I want to do to these claws is color correct them just a little bit better. Uh, they're looking a little bit blue to me, so uh, I'm going to add a levels adjustment just like we did to our environment map. And I uh, go to the red channel and the red channel. Now this is something I do a lot when I'm compositing CG to live action. It really helps me match the color tones. I'll pull out a little bit of the red, go to the green channel. I'm going to lighten that up as well, go to the blue channel. Uh, it's looking a little bit light, so let's darken that down, and that looks pretty good. Now next, the claws are looking a little bit sharp, so I'm going to add a fast blur to them and set the blurriness to 0.5. And also, I want to add a little bit of grain to these claws, so add grain is the effect that we're using, and uh, change this to final output. I'm going to change the size down to, uh, say, 0.5, and the intensity down to about 0.3. And finally, I'm going to turn on motion blur for my element 3D layer and the composition, and the claws are just about finished. And like I've said a lot of times before, you're going to want to go through and spend a lot of time refining and making this look as good as you can specifically for your shot. I'm going fast just for the sake of the tutorial so you guys can see all of the little techniques and things that I apply, but a lot of this is definitely not perfect, so keep that in mind. And please let me know if you have any issues or have any questions with any of this, and I will do my very best to help you guys out. Now, with that being said, we're ready to move on to our final segment, which is the skin displacement. So over here in the project panel, find your composition that you've been working in, and then let's duplicate it. Open up your new one that you just duplicated. Uh, first, I'm going to change the name so we can see it better. This is going to be called displace, if I can spell place. There we go. And uh, now we're going to go to the very end where the claws would just be going back in. That looks good. On this frame here, I'm going to create a new solid. Uh, make the solid white and click OK. Now we can shut off the visibility for now. 
And with the pen tool, I'm gonna to draw three lines that act as the claws. So there's one. You can click the solid to reset so you don't just continue the same mask. There's two. And there's three. Now I'm going to hit M to bring up the properties for the masks and click the stopwatch to set a keyframe for all three of them. Now holding shift, I can select all three masks and move forward frame by frame and just manually adjust where they are on the arm for probably about six or seven frames. That looks good. Now we're going to add a stroke effect to this white solid. Click all masks and then change on original image to reveal original image. Now we can turn back on the visibility for our solid. Uh, the lines look a little thin, so I'm going to make the brush size about 3.5. Now uh, back here at the very beginning, right when the claws, when you would imagine they would be about touching the wrist if they were actually retracting back into the hand. So I'd say about there, I'm going to turn the end down to zero and then create a keyframe for end and start. I'm gonna move forward four frames and then make end 100% and then move forward three more frames and then make start 100% as well. Now, if you play this back, what you're left with are these lines that shoot up the arm, but they're going one at a time. And the way to fix that is just turn off this box that says stroke sequentially and there they all go together. Now, next I'm going to add a fast blur to this because it's looking a little bit sharp, say about three pixels. Now, duplicate the fast blur and change the blur dimensions to just horizontal and then turn that up quite a bit, maybe about 55%, 40%, somewhere in that range. Now, we can select everything except for the white solid and then just delete it. And what you're left with are just these white lines that go across the frame. Let's go back over into our original composition. And in the project panel, let's find our displace composition and drag that above our rotoscope composition. Now, down here at the end, you can see where they start drawing on, just like that. Uh, let's turn off visibility for this for now. And then let's add a new adjustment layer. And on that adjustment layer, we're gonna add CC glass. Under the surface options for CC glass, change the bump map to our displacement layer. And you can see it's already doing exactly what we want it to do and uh, we're done, it's perfect. No, I'm just kidding. We're gonna need to go to the shading and turn the specular down to zero because I'm not a robot. And uh, the height may be down to somewhere subtle, about six. There we go. And uh, the displacement down just a tiny bit as well. This should not be super noticeable. This is kind of more of a detail than it is a prominent part of the effect. It's kind of more an embellishment than anything. Uh, however, that is the technique. And if you play that back, you can see the displacement going up the arm just like we want it to. And just like that, the tutorial is just about finished. Let me know if you guys have any questions or if there's something that's just not working for you. I will do my best to help you out. The YouTube comments or Twitter are great places to reach me. I do get to all of them, so let me know if you need any help and I will be there for you. And as always, if you learned something, don't forget to like and consider subscribing and I will see you guys next time.